welcome to WTHS's first podcast, The Experience. I'm Awa Kamara, your host, and I'm here with two very special guests, and I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Hey, I'm Mary Morgan Burks. And hello, I'm Jennifer Lindsay. And they're our friends from AEE, and we're going to get more about them. So go ahead and tell us about yourselves. What is what represents you? Well, um, first off, I am a mom of two girls. They're um, in the public school system this year for the first time. Um, my oldest, Gravely, she is a first grader at Thomas Street. And Lucy is at ECEC, so we're really enjoying that. I'm from Tupelo, and I graduated from Tupelo High School. And I'm married to my husband, Taylor, who also graduated from Tupelo High School. We weren't here at the same time, though, <laughs> so um, that's always fun to tell. Um, and I just, I love being a Tupelo native and, um, we both went to Ole Miss and I never thought that I would end up back in Tupelo and always said I wouldn't, but here I am and I'm glad to be back in Tupelo and just pouring myself into the community and, um, volunteering all of my time. So, um, I really like giving back to the community. Well, my name is Jennifer Lindsay and I am not a native to Tupelo. I moved here 15 years ago to take a job as an attorney, which is what I still do to this day. I am also a parent. I have a first grader, um, six-year-old little boy named Grayson, and he is great. Um, And he is at Parkway Elementary. So while I am not a native to this area, I know that I was unfortunate enough to grow, grow up in some of the most underperforming schools, not only in Jackson, but in the state of Mississippi. And I know I would not be where I am today if people hadn't identified something within me and helped to cultivate that and encourage that. And those were my teachers. Those were the people that really made school a haven for me. And so now that I am a parent, I'm doing everything that I can with AEE to help the next generation of teachers do that for our children. Great, great. So can you tell us a little bit more about AEE? What does it stand for and how is it important for the Yeah, so um, AEE stands for the Association of Excellence in Education. Um, What we do is we are a booster club um, for the public school system. Um, Different people fund um, AEE by donating money to the booster club, and people who serve in the public schools, teachers, um, they'll write grants grant proposals to us, and we have a team of grant readers, everyone on our board. Um, They review the grants. Anyone can um, kind of ask to be a grant reader, and we'll kind of filter all that. Um, But those people write grant proposals, and we review those with a rubric and grade those, and the top graded grants, we um, reward those by funding those grants. And the grants usually are, like, projects within the school, requests for, like, equipment, like these microphones or the soundproof walls that you see in here, um, things like that. We'll reward those to the, the highest-rated grants. And um, that way, the, ch- the people in the schools, you guys, mm-hmm. are having the best education and learning experience that you can have. Yes, we're very grateful for that. Um, and how do you think the role helps? Um, how do you think your role helps work and make AEE a safe place? So tell us what your role is and how it's benefited you at AEE. Well, my role is I'm currently a part of the Grants in Action Committee. Um, so throughout the year, as Mary Morgan said, we are, you know, um, re- receiving funds. And mm-hmm. a lot of times it's for all of those things that teachers really would like to implement in their classrooms, but Budgets are, you know, a big concern, and they just don't have the financial backing to do so. Mm-hmm. AEE prioritizes, you know, innovation and creating the most creative learning environment possible for our children. Mm-hmm. So a lot of our grants, I guess, are more along those lines in helping push innovation and technology in our classroom to make sure our kids are as best equipped as possible. So when we're receiving those funds as the Grants and Action Committee, we are the ones that are tasked with making sure that all of our generous, generous donor, don, donors excuse me, 
know what it is that they were funding, what it is that they, you know, just put their money toward. So like these these microphones, the soundproof equipment, or like the hollow sands table, they want to see how children or how our students are benefiting from those donations by seeing it in the real world in real time. So do you think these past couple of years, have you seen a big impact from the grants that were granted to students and teachers in Illinois? Um, I really have. Uh, this is my sec- maybe third year on the mm-hmm. board. Um, last This year, last month, we awarded $110,000, and the year before, we awarded over $100,000 as well. But some of those projects went toward, like, the hollow sands table that is um, being utilized by students at THS. Mm-hmm. In addition, the business brew, the coffee shop that's also housed at THS, that was started as part of an AEE grant. But with respect to, like, the younger grades, we've funded um, something like the book vending machines to help promote literacy and reward those students who are meeting their benchmarks and even surpassing them with respect to reading. So I love seeing all of the, the good that AE does in our community, and it just, it just makes me want to work even harder to make sure that we can do more and we build upon our success. So my question for you guys is, um, oh, excuse me. So what is some of the things that have impressed you by AEE? Like any grants that you've seen this year that you thought, oh, this will be very beneficial in the classroom or anything like that? What has caught your eye this year? Um, I am really impressed, and I'm, like, really advocating for this one grant. Um, some um, – Miss Wright at Thomas Street wrote it, and I've, like, really pressed for us to, like, really educate people in the school system on it. Um, Mm -hmm. She, it's, like, the novelty, I forgot the title of it um, totally, but um, we ended up awarding it to all the education, lower lower elementary schools. The novel effect. The novel effect, yes, that's it. Um, So what she did is it's this Bluetooth speaker um, that's going to go around to all of, um, all around, all of the schools, and then, they get this QR code that it goes home with all the students and they, their parents can scan it. And there's this list of, like, thousands of books. And it, you, they scan it and all the books can connect to the QR code. And as they read it, the sounds, there's sound effects that go with all the books. And it kind of makes these younger kids want to read more because it engages them more with the books and stuff. And I know, like, sometimes when I'm reading to my younger children, they – kind of get bored or they just they'll be like oh I just want to go to sleep or oh, I just want to watch tv or something and they're just not perfect you know so yeah. anyways it engages children to be more involved in the reading and the books and so I actually saw Miss Wright today when I was up at my child's school and I just told her I was like let's you know let's get people more educated on what books they can you know that are connected to this app and I just I want to train teachers on this and just make sure now that we've awarded it to all these schools, let's make sure everyone knows about it. Let's get everyone trained on it. I just I think when we're doing all this work for the grants, it's just so important that everyone knows about it. And so I'm just so impressed by all the teachers that to take the extra time to write these grant proposals and stuff. And it makes me so happy to be a part of the Tupelo system because like teachers don't have to write these grant proposals they don't have to go the extra mile and so when we have so many grants come in I just get so excited so is there any difficulties that come with this job you know maybe not all grants are always just awarded so is there any problems that maybe you guys face I think that is honestly probably the one thing that I struggle with because as Mary Morgan said these teachers are going the extra mile they do not have to do this. They put in the time, the effort, and the work to do it. If we, in a perfect world, we'd have a limitless supply of money, mm-hmm. and we could, sub, you know, um, equip everyone with all of their requests, and we can grant those things. Unfortunately, we can only work with whatever it is that we've raised within that current year. So mm-hmm. that is part of the reason why we try to raise so much money, so we can reward as many grants as possible. But be that as it may, that's the purpose of our gr- rubric in our grading process and the utilization of community reviewers because we want to make sure that the best ones, the best proposals, the ones that truly stick out amongst the bunch Mm -hmm. 
are given that opportunity and they do come to fruition. So that's the hard part is the saying no. Mm-hmm. So what do you guys look for when you guys are doing grants? Like, is there something that's more important than others when you guys are doing grants? Well, there's a, it's, it's sort of like a little formula. Like there are certain grants that may only be applicable toward a, a small amount of students. It may be a very good grant, but maybe only 30 kids in a particular class would be able to utilize or benefit from it. Mm-hmm. Or there's others where every child, like the one that Mary Morgan mentioned, the novel effect, every kid in that school in that grade will be able to go home and have that immersive experience with their families. Mm-hmm. And not only that, but at school as well. So there's some that I feel like, for me, I had to look into how many people will this affect? How many lives will this touch? You know, those are the ones that I really feel like benefit the most people. So I feel like, yes, we really should give those greater consideration. So my thing is, how do you guys help raise money since maybe the budget from a previous year is not the same as the current year? So how do you guys try to balance out the different things and work with the new budget and stuff like that? Um, Well, we do have a fundraising committee, and we have a fundraising chair. Um, Something that I like to think about, too, is, like, we have our, like, tried and true people that donate money, Mm -hmm. um, but also just, like, spreading the word about this. And we always have new people moving to town, new people moving into the school system, Something that I like to bring up constantly is, you know, um, there's there's always new people willing to give. And if we spread the word and we talk about how amazing AE is and educate people on what we're doing, that is so important. And um, as I, th- I think, like, as long as we are refilling the pot of names and telling people, hey, this is what we're doing and this is your children being affected and this is how you can help us, that is that is the best we can do, um, and so I mean, I I would give all my money in the world to AE if I could, but I can't. <laughs> um, so that's that's what I try and do, and I try and share 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 away on social media. It's probably annoying, um, but that is that is what I'm trying to do is just constantly educate people on AE. Another source of funding that we have developed over the years, because a lot of things are dependent upon the economy. Mm -hmm. When the economy is rough, we don't get as many donations. But we did implement something called the named donors or named grants. Like certain businesses, and Tupelo is so blessed and so fortunate to have so many businesses that want to pour into our children and our community, like Regions Banks, like Cadence Banks, Mm -hmm. like um, Reed's Department Store, that they donate $5,000 $5,000 for a grant to be named after them, and they can dictate the parameters of that grant. Do you want early education projects or those kind of projects that promote banking or financial literacy? Mm-hmm. And then they can call through those grants or those proposals and pick the one that best aligns with whatever purpose or you know um, area of education that they choose to focus upon. So name grants have been a, an awesome, awesome source of funding for AEE. Okay. So is there any way that community members, parents, and other teachers who might not be in AEE or be active in AEE get involved to help this organization grow? Yes. They can um, check us out on Facebook. We do take donations as little as twelve fifty a month, $25 <laughs> a year. I know we just talked about $5,000, but every <laughs> little bit helps. I mean, bit by bit, we build our, our, our nest that we award grants from. So if you check us out on Facebook, there's links to our website. You can make donations that way. Um, but, yeah, no, there is no donation too big or small for AE. We will gladly, gladly accept it all. My last question for you guys is, if you had any superpower, this is my favorite question, if you had any superpower, <laughs> what would your superpower be and why? Oh, man. <laughs> I wasn't ready for that one. Um, <laughs> I, I, if I had a superpower, it is always it's something that tugs at my heart. I would cure world hunger with my superpower because that is something that's always – like, I know that's a weird superpower, but that is my, like, heartstrings. So I wouldn't, like, it wouldn't be, like, invisibility or something. I know it's probably lame, but <laughs> um, I would just feed everyone. <laughs> so I would just make sure everybody was fed. So 
I think, well, I love that kindness would be your superpower. <laughs> I know, it's so weird. Honestly, I think mine would be foresight. Um, I know sometimes you don't want to see the good, I mean, the bad things that are coming, but I feel like if you knew what was coming. Um, that would give me so much anxiety, you could, Jennifer. you know, take <laughs> affirmative actions to prevent the bad from happening. And af- if you after you've won your fifth lottery, you know, mm-hmm. with the gift of foresight, you can then fund world hunger. That's and a good all one. all those good things. But I would be very anxious. <laughs> Y'all are so much better than mine. I just wanted to be invisible. <laughs> I was just like, invisibility would seem cool. All the all those powers just make me anxious, so I just I can't do it. As long as everyone is fed, you're good. I just want okay. everybody to be have a full belly. But maybe people would be happier if everyone was just full. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, nobody would need a snicker. <laughs> well, that is it for the experience here at WTHS. I hope you guys wonderful time. I know I did, and I hope our audience here got to learn more about AEE and the great impact it has for the city of Tupelo. I'm Al Kamara signing off. Goodbye, guys. Bye. Bye.